Hey, if you enjoy what I do, please drop a like on the video, sub, click the bell if you want to, not necessary, and drop a comment if you want to give me feedback. I'm doing it like this because I'm pretty bad at selling out when I'm recording videos. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and I will see you there. If you're a long time viewer of the channel, you probably know my feelings towards the Buki. She is like, <laughs> she was the first character I got to fun level five for um, reasons. Her MP was very appealing to watch. Her costume is uh, very nice. Uh, jokes aside, Ibuki was like one of the strongest units I got at the start of JP. Really got to start using Buster. Yeah, she was the first unit I actually got to do Buster Luffy with. Um, when I first got Ditch. And I'm sad I don't get to use this character more. I only get to bring her up for challenge quests. Ignoring this ascension because I've literally, literally never used this ascension in all the time I played with her. It has always been this or this. Or this, or this. So let's get started. First, base attack, very, very high. This might be like the highest for Sabres in the entire game, and probably top 10 highest base attacks in the game. HP also. Eh, it's not the highest, but it's not low either. Considering her kit, it makes her a little more tanky than she otherwise would be. But I know other servants have higher HPs, like I think like three or something like that. She has she has defensive numbers as well. Star weight, star gen, saber numbers a little bit lower. Uh MP charge 0.78%. Which is funny because her deck her deck is literally the same as Musashi. The hit counts are very similar. They just flipped around the MP charge. So that's funny. Abuki is known for having a whole whole bunch of traits. She can be buffed by so many servants that have like the double uh buff thing, like uh Jolter, Ellie, um Technically, you can do like uh, Moriarty. Technically, because he can make everyone evil, but that's that would. But that would also set her up for Dobe shenanigans. So I will put that. Uh, Koyan, Koyan Skya Dark. She is able to fully get buffed by Koyan Skya Dark. Um, just a whole lot of traits that work well with her that you can. As like esports units, very very good about that. Uh, also, one of the reasons I wanted to remake this was because QAV is one thing. They make her gains so much better. Buster quick arts, those chains give you so much reward. Like a lot. Before it was like fun was like messy, but now it's more consistent. I'm not saying it's the most consistent, it's more consistent by actually being able to get back to your MP. First skill, one that is very, very easy to waste. Not so much in farming, but in Brave Chains you lose this buff so easily. 40% attack, 3 times 3 turns, that 50% Even if you get the MP append here, it will never, never receive the benefits of these, uh, of this 40%. Simply because it used up all the hits. Now, if they eventually make this turns instead of three times, I don't ever gonna do that. This is still like 40% attack with a 50% battery is it? They needed to put. Restriction for this, because this can be like this is so versatile. Like, I give Sigurd shit for his buff 
being what it is when it was really just a fix to make this kit work better. Like, I don't have that issue with her. Mainly because she's also able to do farming. That's probably the main reason she's farming the secret. Uh, because of kind of serve there. This skill is good for farming. Boss fights, sure. Attack buff. High, high crit damage turns. If you go full for a full buster crit turn, you can and you this is double stacked. Holy crap, your damage is gonna be explosive. That's the other thing. She is a crit servant that can also do farming. I'm reiterating that. She's a crit boss killing servant that can do farming. She is not primarily a farming servant like Artoria, like Mordor. She has other stuff she can do. Second skill, 30% attack, I mean 30% buster, 30% defense, and 20% stars. I mean not 20%, 20 stars. Again, she can do farming. Very good at it. Not as good as uh, Artoria, but still very good. But she's meant to be used in a boss fight. It truly is unfortunate that Ibuki is overshadowed by Muramasa simply because when Support Servants came out, like, Mur Muramasa straight up is just better. He can do Ibuki's role, but better. But he is heavily reliant on MP spam. Buki double stacks her skills. Or she uses, she's used with units can, that can reduce her downtime. Mermas' downtime is still there unless you're using Tomodoro. Which a lot of people would just monkey and do double Castoria. Third skill MP seal. 50% crit damage, damage against undead. I have less of an issue with this because you can force the undead trait. When servants have niches like the dragon, yes, those are niche, but you can enable them yourself with other servants. I, I often forget that Saint George, the famous uh, servant that a lot of like people use for solo solos, his MP puts the dragon train on people. So if you really are looking for like big, chunky, stupid damage, like with uh, Romulus, Sigri, and Renka, like you can use uh, George, like you MP one turn and then he like you give him the taunt and then he just dies. You can like set that up on anyone it just takes more extra steps and more hard rng but you can do it summarization she can set up the undead trait if you if you're really looking for it which 50 percent extra damage like against against a boss not necessarily for farming but for a boss As you can see, uh, yeah, hang on, filter AOE. As you can see, with enable enabling undead, she exceeds Artori. But like, that is kind of misleading because Mordred hits harder if it's against an Artoria, uh, an Arthur or Artoria. But I would say that enabling undead is much easier to do than enabling an Arthur or Mordred situation. No? I, I would say it's easy to put Uzation's MP on top of someone than like actively looking for a King Arthur fight. My two cents on it. Is this the best damage mod? No. 
are you able to mess around with it kinda it's gonna take two years though which is the bad part it's it's there for later passes we got some good ones magic resist 20 percent riding nine percent makes this four day quick card better still not gonna be amazing but it's, it's there 12 percent buster damage at all times which is why this uh, buff was made to 30% because she has a very high natural bust, buster buff uh, passive. 12% like is more than most servants have. Like some servants combined get 12%. And she also gets dra uh, damage cut with it. Intrinsic. 200. It's not amazing, but it's there. And last thing, pickle. And she gets buff removal as a passive she was meant for boss fights it's just her role as a farmer overshadows that because of how much farming has to do with this game in a vacuum by herself her kit looks phenomenal but put like all the other aoe uh five star buster savers she doesn't stand out her damage, like her base damage without the damage mod, is still better than like Arthur or Morgan, and she's able to. She has better damage potential for uh, the farming because of double stacking her buffs. Obviously, not the Morgan. But, you know, like, uh, yeah. This is, I would advise going extra attack, but there is Kaden, or a reason to go for this one. Because with Koi and Dark, uh, you can start Kabuki off with the 20%, pop uh, Koi and Dark skill for 30, and then pop her first skill for the 50% uh, battery. And then uh, you plug Suit in uh, Bitch Light cooldown no I, i'm this is hypothetical stuff um sorry wasn't thinking straight because you need a 50 percent uh event ce to do that that's a caveat with uh koi and dark you need the 50 percent ce if you want to actually do like uh three turn four. but there there is a reason to get mana loot. there is a use case it's just not super MP. It gives yourself ignore invincibility for one turn. Defense piercing uh, damage always. So if you have buff block on, it's only going to stop this. It's not going to stop the defense pierce. And OC, buster performance down. Starts at 20, goes up to 40 for three turns. Does not happen for damage, but that's fine because she's supposed to lead with the MP and then you're doing a Buster Break Chain for maximum damage. Like the Buster Downs is what makes up for her um, attack buff not lasting as long. Not exactly, but it does it does uh, help out keeping her damage uh, high. Bon CE. Super, super specific. And definitely not the best for her. Buster performance by 20% for all party members with Divine. Divine is common. But this would require you running her as a sub DPS, not an actual DPS, unless you just focus on Buster performance, in which case there are much better scenes. If she's on the field, she's probably main DPS. We're not running her as a sub DPS. Her damage potential is too explosive for her to be a sub DPS. It does not matter if she has an AoE MP. She is still going to hit stupid fucking hard.
I, I haven't done this in a while, but I need to bring up when a Boogie is getting on Twenty-four million download campaign. Literally one year from now. This, I feel, is the safest time to summon for a new After Jocks, no scene will come in a month. If you, uh, if you want, like, if you prefer Mel's to the end, crazy fucking straight up bitch, Morgan, Oberon. All those back to back. If you want Melusine, get her in December. He coming right up to Muramasa. Muramasa is going to get much more uses right now. So, bitch. He, if you summon for a Buki now, just know he will be better later. That is a fact. There's no denying that. But right now, she won't get much use. I might do one pack to summon for a movie. As much as I love her, I have her on JP. I don't want to get her on, on my M M yeah. I eventually want to get her on my NA account. It's not the biggest priority. Muramasa is a safe option. And he's a really fucking good one. Alright, I will see you guys in the next uh yeah, next video.